hi guys you are highly highly welcome to my channel my name is mr adinumba and in today's tutorial we're going to be learning how to build this creative ui us designer portfolio using just html css javascript we'll be learning how to animate this using gsap as you can see on scroll the project begin to animate and this is cool transition effect and we're going to be learning this today from scratch all you need to know in order to follow this project is the basic of html css and javascript that is all you need in order to follow this project from start to finish this project is very beginner friendly all right so let's go back to the top and let's take a slow look at the project from the top to the bottom all right so as you can see when the page loads everything comes out with smooth transition effect and this is cool guys this is cool this project is going to help you a lot to learn gsap it's going to help you understand how gsap work so if you have been hearing of gsap and you have not even used it before now or even read the documentation this project is going to provide you the basics and you'll be able to learn how to make your use of gsap in your project so as you can see everything comes out with smooth transition effects on scroll all right so let's scroll down and see the different parts of this project let's go so here is the about session and as you can see when we scroll everything comes out smoothly all right so we can also play uh, our video by clicking on this play button and this pops up so you can replace this video with your personal video we can also close this by clicking on this cancel button. We can open it. We can also close it. Next, let's take a look at the branch section. As you can see, it is auto scrolling. And when you hover over it, it will stop scrolling. And this is cool, guys. All right, this makes a lot of sense. So let's go to the next section, which is my skills. As you can see everything is coming up. And also take a look at our education section and experience section, how everything is fully aligned. And this is it. The next section is my services. So look at how every services is popping up with smooth transition effect. And also the project section. This is cool, guys. So my feedbacks, so the feedbacks section of clients, this is it, and it auto scrolls, and you can also grab and scroll it. Okay, this is the blog session. The blog section is cool. Also the contact section. Look at how everything is coming up. So this is the inputs, first name, last name, the email address and also the message and the send message button so this is the footer section this is cool guys guys if you are not subscribed to my channel please subscribe to the channel now uh the best way to say thank you for this video is by subscribing to this channel just click on that subscribe button and also give this video a thumbs up guys support me by subscribing to my channel and as you do that, God bless. So take a look at what we have here. And I also want to let you know that this application is fully, fully responsive. Let's take a look at it. So let's go to inspect and let's switch to responsive mode. As you can see, it is very, very responsive and it fits perfectly well, both on tablet and mobile mobile phones all right so it is very very responsive okay so guys 
if you really like this video make sure you support me by subscribing to my channel and also giving this video a thumbs up and again you can write your comments on the comment section also tell me the next project you want us to build together and also share this video thank you so much guys in advance i appreciate i appreciate so as you can see it is very very responsive fitting in perfectly fine all right this is cool guys so this is what we are going to be building today and without wasting much time let's get started remember to subscribe to get started we need to create a root folder for our project so let's click on open folder and over here let's create a new folder called creative portfolio let's go ahead and hit on create and let's go ahead and click on open so that it will open as the root folder look at it here it's now open so we need to create three main files here the first file we're going to create is index.html so let's write the structure of html and let's change the title to whatever we wish you can use any title you wish you wish to use and let's go ahead and create style.css and let's go back to our index.html and link to our style.css so let's link to it so it's already linked now the next file we'll create is main.js. This is where we're going to be writing our JavaScript code. Now let's go back to our HTML file. And before the closing body tag, let's link to our main.js. All right. So let's close all other files and let's start from this index of HTML. Before we start writing any code here, let's go ahead and grab our images. So let's create assets folder. And here is a link to the google drive where we I, I store the images so i'll be placing this link on the description section so that you can go ahead and download the images that is the asset files that we're going to be making use of look at it here and uh, look at everything the images is there so you can click on this download button to download it but i'm not going to download it here because i already have it in my computer i'll just go drag it and drop it here so look at it here so let me just drag it and drop into this project. So you that don't have it, go and download it using the link on the description section. All right. So here we have the logos of the brands we're going to be making use of. Also the lo users logos, uh, uh, project logos, the uh, video, we have it here. So we're going to be making use of that. Now the next thing we're going to do right now now that we have our files let's start by uh previewing this project so I i'm using an extension called live preview uh if you don't have it installed in your vs code you can go ahead and install it so what this extension will do is that it will help us to preview our html document inside vs code all right uh, it will, whenever we make changes, it will help us and preview that changes very fast. So if immediately you install it, you will see this icon over here. You can click on it to start previewing. As you can see, it has started previewing this page. You see the title is the same. And let's change the background of this body. As you can see, immediately I'm writing my code. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's previewing automatically. And that is cool, guys. Let's uh, create something here. Let's say hello, uh, guys. Please uh, subscribe to my channel. As you can see, any changes I make here is being reflected. And this is cool, guys. This is what we're going to be making use of. So if you don't have the live preview, go ahead and uh, download it. So let's just copy the link and paste it on our browser, which means when we make changes, because I don't have enough space here, uh, and I need to just uh, copy the link and paste it in the browser. So when we make changes in our VS code, it will reflect on the browser. So, all right, so let's make changes here. You see it's reflect on the main browser. So this is what we're going to be making use of. Now, let me just delete all of this and let's start creating a navigation 
bar. So before we start creating a navigation bar, let's go ahead and uh, grab a link to Font Awesome icon. All right, so let's just search for Font Awesome CDN. And this is it here. So we come over to CDNJS and let's grab the first link. Let's click on the code icon here to copy the code and let's paste it over here. All right. Let's bring this one down. So we can now go ahead and create our navigation bar. So let's just comment navigation start and also navigation end. And let's write our code in between. So we'll create three columns here. So let's just say times three. All right. And let's give this a class of flex. Yeah, on the first column, we're going to be creating a logo. So let's say flex center and logo. So we're going to be using icon as our logo. So let's go ahead and search for the icon we're going to be using as logo. So logo icon. Now let's go to the browser and search for it. So we'll go to fontawesome.com. And when it opens up, let's go ahead and click on icons. So here, let's search for an icon. Let's search for sketch. And let's go ahead and click on free because we want free icons. So let's click on this one. Look at the one I want to use. So let's click, just click on this area and it, it will be copied. So let's paste it here. And this is the icon we'll be using. Now let's go ahead and write the name, designer, and second column. Here we're going to create the different tabs we need. So here, let's call it a flex center, give it the class name of flex center, and also the class name of tabs container, and an ID of sidebar because on uh, little device, we're going to be converting this particular column to a sidebar. That's why we'll give it an ID of sidebar. So here, let's just change this to uh, the respective uh, name, so about. And here, let's change this one to skills, and also change this to skills. So the reason why we're giving uh, this uh, href the name we are writing within H4 is because when we click on this uh, anchor tag, we want uh, the page to scroll to the section that has the ID that we give, uh, the same ID that we give to our href, all right? So for example, when I click on blog, it will take me to blog session. When I click on about, it takes me to about section. So that's why we're doing it that way. So now the third column here, we're going to be creating some buttons. Uh, let's call it buttons rubber. And uh, let's go ahead and create some buttons over here. So first of all, let's include our handles container. So uh, let's say flex center and icon wrapper. And here you can place the link of your handles over there. So first of all, let's search for his book icon over here. So let's click on this and click on this area. Let's paste. So let's just duplicate this one and edit and edit them. So let's go ahead and search for the next social media we're going to be making use of, which is a uh, Okay, let's just paste it here. So TikTok. Now let's go ahead and search for another one. Instagram. Let's paste it here. Now let's go again and search for YouTube. So let's make use of this one. Let's click here and paste it. So while we are pasting, we are replacing the previous one there. So we are done with this. Uh, you can use any link you wish, right? Uh, your social handle link, you can copy it and replace uh, the hash with it. 
Okay, now let's create a bot in here. Uh, let's say contact BGN. So also we are plit, uh, placing uh, what they call hash contact as the value of href so that when the user clicks on this, it will take the user to the contact session. So I think we are done with the markup of this navigation bar. Uh, okay, but let's just complete, let's add some other things like the cancel button uh, here, because when we convert this to a sidebar, we will be needing a cancel button. So let's just create everything and go ahead in our CSS to write all the codes we will need to write. So let's search for this uh, cancel. Okay, let's make use of this one. Let's paste it here. So also let's create a menu button. So all this button are going to be creating, where we're creating right now, for example, the cancel button and also this one I'm about to create, the menu button. Uh, we're going to be hiding them on desktop. We only show them uh, on smaller screen when we have converted the uh, the second column to a sidebar. All right. So we'll make use of this. Let's stick here. Also, let's create uh, another thing. Let's create an overlay over here. So let's create sidebar overlay. And uh, let's give it an ID, not a class. All right, so we can now go ahead and write some uh, CSS code. This is how it looks like currently, as you can see, it doesn't look good at all. And uh, that's why we need to add CSS. Before we start writing the CSS, let's first of all go and grab a link to a uh, Google font that we're going to be making use of. So let's go to font.google.com. And when this opens up, let's search for pop-ins. This is it here. So click on it and let's click on gate font. Click on gate embed code. And uh, let's change the styles. So first of all, let me switch off all of them. Let's select uh, regular 300, 400, and medium 500. Also, semi bold 600 and bold 700. So, just make sure this is on web and let's change it to add import because we want to add it to our CSS. And let's click here to copy and let's remove this tag, this tie tag. And uh, that is it. So, the next thing we are going to be writing here is the CSS variables we're going to be making use of. So look at it here. I have it here in my computer. I will just copy it and paste. I will also be placing this on the description section, the CSS variables, so that you can just copy it and paste on your project as you are building this so that it will be easier for you. All right. So I'll be pasting this on the description section of this video so that you can make use of it as quick as possible. Now let's go ahead and write the general size that our application is going to be making use of before we now start styling the nav bar. So we use, first of all, the general selector. We give it a margin of zero, uh, padding of zero. Also box sizing of border box and uh, text decoration of known. And also let's say border zero and outline zero. So uh, this general styling will be applied to various places in our application. So that's why we are writing it so that we will not be repeating code. So as we write this general style, uh, we will just be making use of the classes we created here in a different part of the application. And that will help us to be faster and not repeat code. So our font family is Poppin. And if popping does not load, we use some serif. So let's scroll back color, primary transparent. And uh, overflow Y auto. And scroll back behavior should be smooth. 
Now let's see the body. Oh, uh, the body. Let's give it uh, a max width of one thousand eight hundred pixel, and also a margin of auto so that it will be at the center, no matter what happens. All right. So the background it is red, and you see our body is always at the center. Okay. Horizontally, it's always at the center. So let's uh, go ahead and select our paragraph. So all our, all our paragraph will give it a font size of 15 pixel, a line height of 25 pixel, and font weight of 400. So our anchor tag, let's give it it's a text decoration of none and display of inline block. Our H1 up to H6. In HTML, we have H1 to H6. So we'll give all of them a font weight of 500. And also the image, we'll give it a width of 100%, a minimum height of 100%, object feet of cover. We just want to make sure that our image fits in perfectly well in any container we place it in. That's what the code for the image will do. And also our input, we are making sure that all our input will have a height of 50 pixels. Now the heading one, all right. So let's just comment here, general size, start. Let's copy it again and paste it below here so that we know where the, it ends. All right, so our heading, heading one right now, uh, we'll make it a font size of 60 pixels Front width of 700, line height of 65 pixels, and also a margin top and bottom 20 pixels, left and right 0 pixels. Now, uh, our gradient text, so any, uh, any element we give this class name to, it means the text within that element will have a gradient color instead of a plain color the color is going to be gradient color all right so primary so any element that contains text and we give it a class name of primary the color will be our primary color also the same thing goes to the muted the color will be our muted foreground color and uh, any Element will give a class name of transition, will have a transition of the transition. Now, the grayscale, we are just trying to change the color of any element we add this class name to uh, to be gray, to have a grayscale. So, we are de defining different uh, angle of uh, grayscale so that it will work in all browsers. Because we we just go ahead and say filter grayscale one hundred percent, there are some browsers that it will not work on. So that's why we're defining different part of it here, so that it will work on different browsers. All right. So let's move on. Blur efforts. Let's position it to relative. All right. So let's give uh, a before pseudo class to blur efforts. And uh, let's position it as absolute. So this blur effect class, we're going to be make, using it to create blur effect on our components. So uh, we're not using it now, but when we start using it, you're going to see how it works in action. All right, so for the remaining part of this general styling, just follow what I do. And I will continue explaining when we are done with the general styling.
are almost done with the general style and here we are done so these are our general styles all this class we're going to be making use of them while creating the different components so let's go ahead and create a style for our navigation so write navigation style starts and also navigation styles end and we'll write our styles in between so let's first of all start uh, by selecting the nav uh, we align the items to stretch as you can uh, see look at it here so uh, if you remember we have already uh, flexed our nav so we just justify the contents to space between so that it will fill the entire space all right so we'll give it a background of bg secondary and position fixed guys if you are still watching this video to this extent and you have not subscribed to my channel please do well to subscribe support me by subscribing to my channel and also give this video a thumbs up and write your comment down below on the comment section the remaining part of this video is very simple to follow all you just need to do is follow what i do on the screen and you'll be able to arrive at the same result with me all right guys let's keep crushing it
Thank you.